What's good everyone, Dave here. In this video, join me as I unbox a new M1 MacBook Pro 16. This will be my third MacBook Pro. My first, a 17 inch model from 2007 that lasted six years. And my current one, a late 2013 Intel Core i7 MacBook Pro 15 that's still going strong, albeit a little slower. But after eight years and skipping all the MacBooks that only had USB-C ports, I felt now's the time to upgrade. So let's dive in. As we open the box, there it is, right on top, wrapped in a paper cover. The MacBook Pro 16 with the M1 Pro chip. Yeah, you can definitely feel that this is a heavier computer, 2.1 kilos. Well, we'll set it aside for the moment and go through the other items in the box. Below the MacBook, you've got the documentation folder with the quick reference guide, the fine print, and two black Apple stickers. That's it. The folder is about five millimeters uh, or so thick because of a spacer inside of it. There's nothing else in there. Next, we have the two meter long braided USB-C to MagSafe connector cord. MagSafe was originally introduced by Apple in January 2006, and this is the third iteration of the magnetic power connector. I'm glad to see Apple's brought it back after discontinuing it for a few years back in 2016. The 16 inch comes with a 140 watt charging brick. It's rectangular and is similar in size to earlier generations. What they don't come with now is the extension cord, which you unfortunately have to purchase separately. And now the star of the show, the 2021 MacBook Pro 16. I decided to buy the base model with the new Apple Silicon M1 Pro chip a 512 gigabyte solid state drive, and 16 gigs of RAM or unified memory, which starts at $3,149 Canadian. You can configure the hard drive with up to eight terabytes of storage, and if you choose the M1 Max chip, you can get up to 64 gigs of RAM. When it comes to ports, the 2021 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pro editions each have three USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports, an HDMI port, and an SD card reader slot, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and of course, the MagSafe power connector. You can also use any of the USB-C ports to charge the laptop. Now let's go through the steps to set up this Mac. Since this is the first time the Mac is being used, the setup assistant will walk us through a few steps to get the Mac up and running. From the hello screen, click on the arrow at the bottom to start the assistant. First, select your language from the list, then click continue. From the list of countries or regions, select your country, and then click continue. On the accessibility step, there are four settings to choose from which enables features based on the needs of the person using the computer. Choose from vision, motor, hearing, or cognitive. If you'd like to set this up later, you can do so in system preferences, or if it doesn't apply to you, you can click on not now in the lower right. Now we move on to connecting to a Wi-Fi network. A list of available networks will be shown. Select the one you'd like to connect to and enter the password. If the network you're connecting to isn't there or you know it's a hidden network, select Other and enter the network name and then the password. 
On the data and privacy screen is just information explaining that when Apple needs to use your personal information to set up or enable features, services, or personalize something for you, this icon will display. Clicking on Learn More will give you a deeper dive into Apple's privacy policy and where you can find more details on their website. From here, click on Continue. All Macs have the Migration Assistant app built right in. If you're moving from another Mac, Migration Assistant can move all your applications, all your data, and settings to your new Mac. Or if you're moving from a Windows computer, Migration Assistant will move over your data to your new Mac. I'll select Not Now in the lower left and we'll continue with the initial setup for now. On this screen in the Setup app, you can sign in or create your Apple ID. With Apple ID, you'll be able to sync information across all of your Mac and iOS devices, download apps, use services such as Find My to help locate misplaced devices, backup to iCloud, as well as subscription services like Apple Music or Apple TV. This is something you can come back and configure in System Preferences later on. And you'll notice at the bottom of the screen, there's that data and privacy icon, indicating that Apple will need to use your personal information to set up this service. Next, we have the terms and conditions for using the computer and its software. Full disclosure, I'm one of those people that don't usually read through the full terms and conditions, I usually kind of just skim through, but they're there for those who'd like to. You'll need to click on Agree on this screen and the confirmation dialog box to continue through the setup process. On the computer account screen, this is where you'll set up the first admin account for the computer. In System Preferences, you can go back and set up additional accounts and make changes to those as needed. In the field labeled Full Name, you can put someone's name, their initials, the name of a team or a department. It's up to you, and it can contain spaces. Since this first account also becomes an administrator account, which can set up other users and their permissions, whether it be an administrator, a standard account, or a sharing only account, we'll name this one Admin or Administrator. In the Account Name field, the name entered here, which can't contain any spaces, will be used as the account name and the name of the home folder. And again, since this is going to be the first account and an admin account, we'll keep it simple and name this Administrator. Choose a profile photo. You can customize this later on in System Preferences. Enter a password for the account you're creating. It's not case sensitive, nor will it check how secure it is. So technically, you could enter 1234 if you wanted. Re-enter it to confirm, and if you need to add a hint for the password, you can do so in this field. Once you're done on this screen, select Continue. Location services will approximate your location using anonymized information from your Wi-Fi network. This will allow apps and services such as Maps, Siri suggestions, websites, and Apple's Find My to provide relevant information based on your location. This is something that I personally have turned on. In analytics, your usage is shared with Apple and app developers to help them improve their software and their services. Although the data is anonymized, I personally uncheck this, turning it off, as there are other ways to provide usage and feedback to Apple. Once you're done on this step, select Continue. Next in the Setup app is Screen Time. What Screen Time does is provide you with details on how often you're using apps on your device on a daily and weekly basis. It's possible to get a report on your combined screen time across your Apple devices when you're signed in with your Apple ID and the Share Screen Time Across Devices is turned on. Although I've got this turned on on my iPhone, I'm not going to turn it on here and so I'll select Setup Later in the lower left. Although Siri has been available on Macs via Mac OS for a while, I never set it up on my late 2013 MacBook Pro, but will enable Siri on this new MacBook. Click Continue. On the next screen, from the list of available options, select a voice for Siri. Hi, I'm Siri. For now, I'll select the first one. After setup is complete, you can customize and change settings for Siri in System Preferences. To set up Siri, say the phrases shown on the screen. Once done, you'll get a prompt indicating Siri is ready to use, and you can move on to the next step. On this next screen where Apple asks for your assistance in improving Siri and their dictation service, it sends Apple a portion of your audio with what you've asked Siri. Although it's anonymized, this is something I have turned off on my iPhone and will keep it off on my Mac. So I'll select Not Now. Touch ID is available on newer MacBooks and allows you to unlock your MacBook with your fingerprint instead of typing in your password. 
To set this up, tap and release your finger on the Touch ID sensor a few times, and don't forget about those edges. The setup assistant will let you know when it's complete, and like some of the other settings, you can set this up later in system preferences if you'd like. In this next step, you can choose from three appearance modes, light mode, dark mode, or auto. This will adjust the color of certain interface elements like the dock, buttons, and the background. Some apps like Apple Maps, Notes, Mail, all have additional appearance mode settings you can customize. Personally, I leave mine on light mode. After clicking continue on the appearance mode step, you're presented with a desktop and you finish the initial setup in Mac OS Monterey. Going through the steps in the setup assistant will take around 10 minutes to complete. While you can start using the Mac now, it's best to run a software update to download and install any available updates. To do that, click on the app logo in the top left of the menu bar, then click on About This Mac. On the Review tab of the dialog box, click Software Update. This will open the Software Update section of System Preferences and check if any updates are available for your Mac. If any updates are available, they'll display here. To start the install process, click Update Now. Depending on the type of software update from Apple, the download and install process can take a while. This update from macOS 12.0 to 12.1 took about 30 minutes to complete. At some point during your setup process, you'll see the File Vault disk encryption screen. File Vault encrypts data on your Mac from unwanted access. I've had this feature enabled on my previous two MacBooks and will enable it on this one as well. A couple things to note when turning File Vault on. You'll be given a recovery key and it's important to write this key down and keep it in a safe place as Apple cannot recover any lost File Vault key codes. You'll also need to sign into your Mac each time you turn the computer on or wake it from sleep. Once you've written down the key code, click continue. Software update will display again and it shows the Mac is all up to date. Macs come with 31 built-in applications, so out of the box you can start organizing photos, use pages to compose word processing documents, create presentations with Keynote, use numbers to build spreadsheets, edit movies with iMovie, keep in touch with family and friends via messages or FaceTime, listen to music and podcasts, and so much more. As I mentioned earlier, my last two MacBook Pros, the 17-inch and 15-inch, lasted me 6 years and 8 years respectively and my late 2013 MacBook Pro 15 was compatible with 8 Mac OS releases up to Big Sur in November 2020. However, if you're someone that doesn't upgrade their laptop every few years, you'll certainly get your money's worth from an investment like this. Apple does have smaller and less expensive laptops that feature the new M1 chip family that are amazing in their category. Since Apple started releasing Macs with M1 chip, the reviews and impressions on them have been incredible. For me, my choice came down to screen real estate, and that's why I chose the 16-inch model. Plus, based on my personal experience with my last two MacBooks over the past 14 years, I'll certainly get my money's worth out of this one for many years to come. Thank you very much for watching my unboxing of the 2021 MacBook Pro 16. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, please consider sharing it, and please consider subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace and love.